Factors affecting the rate of reaction. Many chemical reactions happen quickly, sometimes at tremendous rates. For example, chemicals that burn slowly under usual conditions can react explosively in powder form. The increased contact between air and powder can be enough to blow up an entire grain silo, as you can see here. This is a real concern for people who work or live close to granaries, coal mines, and other in industrial operations, such as flour mills, where powders are manufactured, used, and packaged. Other chemical reactions occur much more slowly and can take many hundreds or even thousands of years to complete. You may have observed evidence of this slow rusting on things like uh, rusty old fence wires or chains from a bicycle. Uh, unless you protect these things with some sort of a coating of oil, it will eventually become too rusted to use, but this can take many years. In chemical reaction, how quickly or slowly reactants turn into products is called rate of reaction. A reaction that takes a long time has a low reaction rate. A reaction that occurs quickly has a high reaction rate. A rate describes how quickly or slowly a change occurs. Every chemical reaction pr proceeds at different rate. However, you can speed up or slow down the rate of chemical reaction. In this graphic, we see uh, a line that represents the rate of reaction that has actually changed throughout the chemical reaction. So basically, a rate describes how quickly or slowly a change occurs. Factors affecting the rate of reaction. Temperature. Temperature is one factor that affects the rate at which reactions occur. Generally, heating reactants speeds up the rate of reaction. The reason being that atoms or molecules of the, the reactants move more quickly and with more energy, resulting in more collisions. So if you had a situation where you had just a beaker full of some sort of particle or chemical, um, all particles actually have some energy and they're just moving in random directions and they will collide with each other randomly. Now if you put the same particles or the same substance under a heat source, those particles are going to move but they're actually going to move more quickly and they'll have more collisions. If, if we add another substance to the first situation, and let's say the little red dots represent one reactant and the blue dots represent another reactant, there will be collisions and every time there's a collision there's a possibility that the two will react. Uh, if you have the same amount of this second substance added to the uh, substance, the first substance that's being heated, you'll see that the particles will move faster and col they'll collide more frequently. So if they collide more frequently, you're going to get a faster reaction because they have more opportunities to react with one another. So this is often why we cook food because cooking food uh, speeds up the reactions that are, are necessary to make the food tasty and uh, cooling, on the other hand, is simply the lowering of the temperature and it slows the rate of reaction. And the reason is just the reverse of uh, the other situation. In this case, the atoms or molecules are moving a lot less slowly and as a result there are fewer collisions and less opportunities for reactions to take place. So this is why we often uh, freeze foods as well and by freezing them, again, we're reducing the rate of reaction and that is basically preventing the reactions involved with rotting and uh, biodegradation. Concentration. Concentration is another factor that affects the rate of reaction. A concentration just refers to how much solute is dissolved in a solution. So if we have pure water in two different beakers, same volume, and we'll just represent the water this way, and then we add a second material, let's say we dissolved some salt into it, we just poured some salt in there, okay, it would have a certain saltiness. Um, and then if we had another, uh, we added to the other beaker some salt as well, but this time we added more. And we have the same volume of water starting out, but we've actually added more of the, the particle or the, the solute. 
So what we end up with is two solutions that have different concentrations. This one has a lower concentration and this one has a higher concentration than the other. So we could say that solution A has a lower concentration than solution B and solution B has a higher concentration of salt than solution A. So with concentration, the higher the concentration of the reactant atoms and molecules present, the greater the reaction rate. And this is because more reactant molecules increase the chances of a collision between them. So if we had the situation where we have a lot of these particles and we add a second material that will react with it, okay, we will get a fairly fast rate of reaction. If we have the situation where we have the same volume of those original particles, but we add more of the second type of material, the rate of reaction will be faster because these particles will be colliding with each other more frequently than they are in this situation. So in A, the rate of reaction is faster, or sorry, in, so in A, the rate of reaction is slower than in B, and we can say that in B, the rate of reaction is faster than in A. Surface area. This is another factor that affects the rate of reaction. Um, surface area is a measure of how much area of an object is exposed and we can see this uh, fairly graphically with these sug the sugar cube and the free sugar. On the left we have a sugar cube and you can see its exposed faces. That would be its surface area. Okay, But if you look at free sugar, each one of the little cubes has actually got a certain amount of surface and that while each one of these little uh, pieces of sugar, little crystals of sugar has a lot less surface area than the big uh, sugar cube, if you took the surfaces of each one of these little grains of sugar and added them, you'd find there's an awful lot of surface area relative to the same number of grains that are packed into a sugar cube like this one. So this one has a higher surface area. And when we have chemical reactions occurring, uh, any substances that have a higher surface area are going to react uh, more, more quickly than those that have a lower surface area. So with surface area, the greater the surface area, the faster the rate of reaction. And this is because more molecules can collide with each other. So uh, in the grain elevator example, uh, we saw that uh, something that usually doesn't burn very easily, which is just uh, the grains themselves, when they end up as a fine powder, they actually explode or it can become quite explosive and that's just because there's a lot more surface area on that powder, the ground up grain, than there is on the, the grains themselves before they're ground up. Um, surface area can also be important uh, if it, a reaction that occurs between two liquids that cannot mix. And sometimes this is used in chemistry uh, to control the rate of reaction. So one example would be in the production of nylon. Uh, nylon is a fiber that's used to produce all kinds of things from parachutes to clothing, jackets, very lightweight um, material. So it's really suitable for like um, active wear type jackets and shorts and that sort of thing. Uh, what happens in this situation is that uh, they, they mix one of the reactants with water and another of the reactants dissolved in an organic solvent called uh, tetrachloromethane and it turns out that the water and the tetrachloromethane won't actually, uh, actually mix with each other. So you get the water on the bottom and the water has one of the reactants dissolved in it and you have the tetrachloromethane so and then you have the tetrachloromethane and uh, it has reactant B dissolved in it 
And what that does is it creates just a very small surface or a very small area where you can actually get reaction occurring. And uh, the way that this is beneficial is that you can then draw out this material that actually forms and this is the actual nylon and you can actually pull it out as threads and you get these very fine fibers of nylon whereas if you didn't dissolve the reactants into these two different substances and it was just allowed to mix freely you'd end up with just a solid block of nylon which doesn't make for very good shorts or parachutes. A uh, final thing that actually uh, is going to control the rate of reaction is the presence of a catalyst. And uh, catalysts are just uh, substances that speed up the rate of chemical reaction without being used up in the reaction themselves. So the, the body and living things actually contain a lot of natural catalysts because it's desirable in living things to have the rate of reaction uh, go at a, a pace that's fast enough to keep uh, the living thing alive, but it's really not desirable to heat up the substances because that would then kill the living thing. So you need these special little chemicals called uh, enzymes, which are just catalysts that is present in living things. And the way that these catalysts work is they tend to bring uh, substances together or make it more likely that they'll react. In the case of an enzyme, uh, you may have an enzyme that has a special shape and it's designed so that the two substrates or the two substances that are supposed to react with each other will actually they'll fit perfectly into the spaces and that brings them together and actually results in something called an enzyme substrate and substrate complex but you can see that it's actually bringing the two chemicals that you want to react closer together and the end result is that you get a new substance and the enzyme actually is there to be reused again so uh, it can go and catalyze the same reaction all over again only with different substrates so that's one way that a catalyst works and this particular type of catalyst is an enzyme you'd find this in a, a living thing bottom line with these catalysts is that they lower the required energy to uh, start a reaction. So if you have the reactants and they have an energy level here and they want to get to here, you have to actually put energy in sometimes and that means heating. And again, it's not always desirable, uh, but that curve represents the reaction happening and you have to kind of get over the hump to get the reaction to happen. You can lower how high the hump has to be by using enzymes so maybe you don't have to add heat or you don't have to add as much heat and you can still get the reaction to happen and if you start out with certain substrates A and B you can end up with new ones C and D without having to do a lot of heating or a lot of shaking up or increasing the surface area you simply add the catalyst. So one example of a practical use of, of catalysts is in catalytic converters. Cars built in North America since 19, the 1980s have pollution control devices built into their exhaust systems. Uh, and a catalytic converter is just a stainless steel device that's shaped like a muffler and inside there's a ceramic or a wire honeycomb structure that provides a large surface area for reactions to take place. Um, and so uh, what it's supposed to do is that as the exhaust passes through the catalytic converter several reactions occur and much of the poisonous carbon monoxide which is produced from the combustion of gasoline reacts with oxygen and is changed into carbon dioxide. Uh, so that's a little bit uh, less, less harmful but also the most poisonous uh, nitrogen oxides are converted into nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. Okay, so in summary, there are several things that can actually speed up the rate of reaction. If you want to speed it up, you can increase the temperature. You can also increase the concentration. You can increase the surface area. increase any of those and you can also add 
a catalyst 